What's the Holy Spirit? What's the role of the Holy Spirit? Well, we call it Holy Spirit, uh, the Lord and the Life Giver, according to the Nicene Creed. Uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, if you ask people when they last felt the Holy Spirit, they would say in church music or in a church. But if you ask them, when did you last feel the spirit of life? Then they say, ah, the last morning when I stood up, I felt the spirit of life. And therefore I preferred to write a book, not on the Holy Spirit, but on the spirit of life. Who, who gets in on that spirit? Where is it? How do you activate it? A, a pill? Can you take a pill? Pharmaceutical companies have it? Uh, you are typical American. <laughs> what can I do? Uh, don't do anything. Wait on the spirit, and the spirit will come. As the wind, you cannot uh, order the wind to come. The wind comes, and uh, let you touch with the wind of the spirit. As we acknowledge the land today, I invite you to begin right where you are. Let's ground in this space, in this moment together. I invite you to pause and take a breath, slow down a moment, and let yourself feel how you're anchored in this place, how gravity roots you to this place. And now we notice the land itself and we feel how it is supporting us, holding us up. We recognize that this land has been home to indigenous peoples for thousands of years. They lived and thrived here long before European settlers came and drastically altered their lives and the life of the land itself. We're hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. The light of Christ is burning and calling us to peace and justice in no uncertain terms. As the Gospel writer Luke says, to whom much has been given, much will be required. And those of us born into privilege have a responsibility to stand with the oppressed, just as Jesus did. And in the face of systemic racism here in Canada and the many ways we perpetuate it, we are called to listen and learn, to challenge and change the status quo, to make space for others. And so I pray that this light may remind us of our responsibility to an active and engaged peace making space where it's not being equally shared. And that light spreads through the spectrum, and that spectrum of love welcomes us. As we have the candle of welcome burning in our sanctuary, we affirm that there's a place for you in this community. It is a community of people who don't love the same, think the same, vote the same, but are trying our best to follow in the way of Jesus. We do that knowing there's lots of room for us to be ourselves. And so we invite you into this time, a time of worship, a time for knowing yourself in a deeper way, and a time for making room for you to see through another's eyes. 
May this invitation into the joy and struggle of life help us to notice the blessing of God's presence. Oh 
Whenever we gather, we are aware that the cloud of witnesses is with us. We light these memorial candles this morning, honoring those loved ones who are with us in spirit, but not in body. And their wisdom is here. We give thanks for those who are remembering specifically around birthdays and anniversaries that are on our hearts, but also the encouragers, the ones who saw the spark in us and offered words and actions that encouraged us to grow and come close to the faithfulness of God. Shining and certain, 
through all our turmoil, terror, and loss, bonding us gladly one to the other till our world changes facing the cross. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Listen to these words of encouragement from chapter 12 of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Romans. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Herein lies the good news. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, we revel in the good news of your peace. It is encouraging to hear the sounds of the city, of the season of summer and construction, of life continuing within us and around us. Today, as we meet your ancient words, between the words that are said and the words that are heard, May your word be known. Amen. We are week four into our summer series on being empowered by the Spirit, exploring our spiritual gifts. And God gives these gifts to everyone. And God distributes these gifts according to God's grace. There is an abundance of gift giving. And God promises that the Holy Spirit will be our comforter and our guide on this journey of exploration. Wow, you have a particular set of gifts as a unique child of God. And there is relief that you don't have to have all of the gifts. You don't have to do anything to deserve it or try harder to gain them. You have the ones that have been given to you. And using these spiritual gifts brings you joy and brings joy to the community around you. For we were created by God to share these gifts. Isn't that encouraging? Today, I want to spend some time on the spiritual gift of exhortation, the gift of encouragement. How do we know it? Encouragement brings comfort and consolation and counsel to those in need. 
Those are three parts that are the essence of how you know what encouragement looks like. People with the gift care for others in a way that empowers them to be helped and on the pathway of healing. Encouragement is modeled in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, as a parental role. The apostle Paul writes, we dealt with each one of you like a parent with their children, urging and encouraging you and pleading that you live a life worthy of God. And as we read later in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, encouragement was esteemed as most important to the community in times of hardship and persecution. It was not a gift to be taken for granted. Timothy, an early church leader, young of years, had the gift of encouragement. We read in 2 Timothy 1 verse 4 how his grandmother Eunice and his mother Lois, both women with the gift of encouragement, had first nurtured him as a child. In his first letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul refers to Timothy's gift of encouragement as well as demonstrating his own use of sharing in that gift. He writes, Until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhorting and to teaching. Encouragement comes right after hearing the word. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, Paul writes. I could just stop, full stop. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. This invitation this summer is to explore your own gifts and to begin to recognize those gifts in others. Paul's enduring relationship with Timothy encouraged and strengthened him during difficult times. And because of his gift of encouragement, Timothy became Paul's closest companion. We need to surround ourselves or to come close to people that share that gift. Not for the building up of just yourself, but for the community as a whole. I wonder who in your life has the spiritual gift of exhortation. Perhaps during these pandemic times, you've had someone who has been an encourager for you, regularly cheering you on and finding ways to encourage. What do these qualities look like? Calling people, posting support on social media, writing a good old-fashioned letter, making or sending a card, social distance showing up, a new way of visiting. In 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 14, Paul writes, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. A visit, a letter, a phone call, a text, a tweet, a note, These are all ways that words can be used to lift another up. And it calls to us from the scripture reading today in the letter to the Romans as ways to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. In exploring the spiritual gift of encouragement, I was reminded of a poem written by Dorothy Law Nolte. Her legacy as a parent educator, as a writer, practitioner, and family counselor taught many people about relationships and dynamics in families and the power of encouragement. I wonder if you're familiar with her poem, Children Learn What They Live. If children live with criticism, they learn to condemn. If children live with hostility, they learn to fight. If children live with encouragement, they learn confidence. If children live with encouragement, they learn confidence. We see that in the relationship between Paul and Timothy in the mentoring that before teaching came encouragement. The spiritual gift of encouragement is empowering. The opposite of this is criticism, which is disempowering. Now, we all have the ability to practice each of the spiritual gifts as part of this community, but you must know someone who lives from this gift. 
Jeremy Riddle quotes, encouragement comes to them like breathing. Encouragement is like oxygen to the human spirit. Don't forget you're carrying someone else's air. Encourage them. Help them breathe. We could spend the rest of the morning sharing stories of encouragement. I was remembering a friend when his best friend was diagnosed with cancer. He went right away and had his head shaved on the day that her hair had fully fallen out to walk beside her through her journey. Or I had images of the Olympic runners who stopped their race and walk alongside the person in the lane beside who's fallen and together they cross the finish line. I remember just... Um, just last spring we did a funeral here at Islington and each of the speakers talked about how their grandmother had sent notes to them regularly. And when they got up to share the eulogy, they had copies and notes that had been tucked all around their house that were left by their grandma. In our own congregation, as you hear this sermon, you can think of in our community, those who practice and have been given that unique gift of encouragement. And they do it in their own way. How do they speak? How do they pay attention to time? How do they notice what is needed around them? Closer to home, in my own life, my dad has been given this gift. I can count on him day or night to offer words of encouragement and I've watched him live a lifetime of cheering others on. Whatever is going on in their life, perhaps this gift is inherited because in doing my own spiritual gifts inventory, I recognize this as one of my spiritual gifts. And I also realize I need to make intentional room and time to use this gift for the uplifting of our community. Sometimes when our lives get crowded and busy, instead of playing from our strengths, we spread ourselves too thin, and the community loses from not experiencing our own unique gifts. In a former community I served, I remember one of the encouragers. One season of Lent, Jackie made everyone in our congregation these keychains to have uh, somewhere on them during the season. They were little frogs, and the acronym for frogs stood for fully rely on God. She was not just an encourager with her words of others, but reminding them to come back to the presence of God. I can't think of a better way to deepen into this spiritual gift of encouragement than to share with you two much-needed frog stories. Never give up. Often it can feel like life is swallowing us up. We need people in our life to hold up that cartoon and to remind us not to give up. I want to tell you another frog story. As a group of frogs were traveling through the woods, two of them fell into a deep pit. When the other frogs crowded around the pit and saw how deep it was, they told the two frogs that there was no hope left for them. However, the two frogs decided to ignore what the others were saying and then proceeded to try and jump out of the pit. Despite their efforts, the group of frogs at the top of the pit were still saying they should just give up, that they would never make it out. Eventually, one of the frogs took heed to what the others were saying, and he gave up, falling down to his death. The other frog continued to jump as hard as he could, and again, the crowd of frogs at the top of the pit yelled at him to just stop the pain and let go. He jumped even harder and finally made it out. And when he got out, the other frog said, Did you hear us? And the frog explained to them that he couldn't hear He thought they were encouraging him the whole time. The moral of this story, people's words can have a big effect on others' lives. Think about what you say before it comes out of your mouth. Those are reminders written right into scriptures when Paul writes, let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth except that which is used for building others up. Pay attention to how we speak to each other and about each other. 
for it might just be the difference between life and death. The word used in the Bible for encouragement is exhortation. We hold on to that word. We pay attention to how we live into it. Do we come alongside other people to help? Do we work with those who are lesser abled and help others to do their best? This is not a fix-it person who has this gift. This gift of encouragement means to travel alongside another. How do you start to do that? It begins in relationship, by knowing another's name, by seeing them. In my former life when I was a camp director, it used to drive me crazy that halfway through the week I would notice one or two camp counselors not knowing the names of the eight children in their care. Three days and two nights had already gone by. And so to encourage them to learn the names of those who were in their care for the week, I challenged them. I said, if I can learn 100 campers' names in the first hour of camp, then you can learn the eight names of the campers in your care. It became a game for us, encouraging each other to first know the children by learning their names. Because we can change our relationship by seeing them in a different way. When someone has a name, we are changed in the experience of knowing them differently. It's why when we have Zoom calls for church or meetings, it's important that people put their name as you meet them so that you match their face with their name and become part of the bigger community. Knowing someone's name is an encouragement in itself. I see you. I hear you. I'm interested in who you are. I want to know about you. I want to know you even more than I want to know about you. I want to see you grow. I want to know you so that I can encourage you. To come alongside means we pay attention to those around us, to those we're in community with. Encouragement translates into the natural world. Gardeners and farmers are in relationship with their plants. And you know the long-time spiritual practice of talking to creation. This sermon ends with words from St. Francis, one who is known for praying and communing and being in relationship with God's creation. He writes about sowing seeds. Sowing and encouragement are similar in nature. The encouragers around us will often help us to become our best selves and nurture the fruits of the Spirit in us. I pray that as we learn to recognize our own unique gifts and encourage the gifts in others, that we will become stronger as instruments of God's peace. May it be so. Dark
And with the prayer of St. Francis fresh on our hearts, let's continue and deepen into prayer together. Please join me. We thank you, compassionate God, that you hear the prayers of our hearts. All who rejoice at a baby's new birth, all who mourn when the circle is incomplete, when a friend or loved one has died, all who are grateful when their work meets success, all who suffer because no work is to be found, all who are bored, not having enough to do, all who are tired, having too much to do, all who are surrounded by the love of family and friends, whether near or far, and all who are lonely. And we thank you, God, for hearing us in every situation of life. And we thank you for the ways you encourage us through loved ones, partners, parents, grandparents, siblings, and friends, through teachers, coaches, ministers, and mentors, and through the simple gifts of nature. Help us to support one another always, rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. We want to be joined together as members of the body of Christ, loving one another and serving the world, living as instruments of your peace. Like Jesus, we want to respond to each human being who crosses our path with sensitivity and compassion. We pray this in Jesus' name as we join our voices together in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. One of the most encouraging stories I've heard of the work of the church globally is the video you'll see soon. It's the work of the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada working with our partners in Cuba. In the past decade, Cuba's socialist government has opened the economy to small businesses. Some Cuban partners of the United Church of Canada provide training to new entrepreneurs. The Pastoral Ministry for People with Disabilities of the Cuban Council of Churches has gone a few steps further. With support from the United Church's Gifts with Vision program, the pastoral ministry is helping small farmers with disabilities to improve their livelihoods. Ernesto Gonzalez is the project coordinator. This project emerged as a necessity for people living with disabilities. First, to show the need for inclusion. Then, for showing the capacity people have. 
and also to bring a process of economic improvement. In Cuba, people with disabilities are very vulnerable. The state protects family, but people with disabilities are less able to get jobs. They have less economic independence. This way, in a small step, they can develop abilities, creativity, and contribute to the economy of the families. In our case, we were given money to purchase chickens and other material for their cages and nests. We consumed some of the eggs and we have also traded some of the eggs that we produce with neighbors for vegetables, fruit and milk that we can use. We have also sold eggs in order to have some economic remuneration. Today, to be exact, we have produced 552 eggs. So we have made a good use of the money that we were given. The project involves about 30 families in four provinces of central Cuba. Participants say their efforts are not just for their own benefit, but for the communities around them. They practice what they call a social and solidarity economy. I am raising goats. I bought one male and three females. Two of them have had two babies, so now we have eight, and one more is pregnant. So with that, I have production of milk and share that with children whose family are in need or to help children who can't digest cow's milk. We hope to increase our project for sustainable development, giving priority to people with disabilities who have greater needs and people who are sick with children too giving them some help, just as we have received. I am an agronomist by profession, and at first I suffered the put-down negativity of society. You can't, how can you do this? And I fought back, because everything depends on the person. That is a way to lift the self-esteem of people. I am sure that many will do great things. There will always be those who go slower or faster, because that depends on the capacity of the person. But that motivated me to share this experience with others. I use myself as an example. If I can, you can too. Not everyone is the same, but everyone can do something. That is the most important part. And we give thanks to the United Church of Canada and you who accompany us. I am grateful that when you give to the Ministry of Islington United, you're part of the work of the story we've just heard. Thank you for the ways you've given virtually on the website or e-transferred to office at islingtonunited.org or put checks or drop them off uh, to the church to continue this work of encouraging our community and making a difference in Christ's name. It's just one way that we are part of this ministry together. I invite you to stay tuned for this week. Compassion Camp is launched online for our children and families, and Michelle's been working hard. 
She's also making sure that you have um, all ages uh, have a copy of Flat Jesus, cut him out, color him, and take him wherever the summer leads you. Take a picture and send it to Michelle at IslingtonUnited.org. We're gathering a slideshow that'll be um, shown at the end of the summer to mark what the season has held and where Christ has shown up for us. Tonight will be the last resonance event for the summer, and it's live worship at 7 o'clock, led by James and Jason and Cynthia. So join us at 7. We'd love to have you experience that before we take a rest. The season of summer invites us into resting from things we have filled our time with and making space for the exploration and deepening of faith in time of Sabbath. Stay tuned for what will come in the fall. We're glad you're part of what's happening here. Let's sing together our closing hymn and share that praise, for we're going to live so God can use us. From this place surrounded by the unconditional love of God and following in the way of the Christ who risked for love. And may you be empowered by the gifts of encouragement surrounding you. Go in peace. Amen.